Hello everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. I'm finally back and yes, this is my real voice. First of all, I want to thank all of you for reaching 20,000 subscribers. It's a huge milestone for me and I'm really happy with this result. I have a lot of exciting new content coming to this channel, so don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss anything. And make sure to follow me on all of my other social media platforms. You can find the link in the description. Alright, let's get started with this new tutorial. Today we're using Blender version 3.5, it's currently the latest version available, and I recommend following this tutorial with this version, because some functions may not be present in older versions. So if you have versions older than 3.4, I suggest you update the software. Let's start by deleting the camera and the light. The only thing we need is our default cube. Here in the drop-down menu, we can select the geometry nodes option, which is located here. Now we have our workspace. Why do I want to use geometry nodes? Simply because it's a tool that gives me a higher quality result compared to other methods. We don't need this piece here, so we can easily delete it with the X key. Then, with Shift plus A, let's add the node called String to Curve from the toolbar. Connect this node to geometry. As you may have already guessed, this node allows us to input text. So let's go to String and write our text, which in my case will be Thazero. Now that we have our text, we need to make it 3D. Let's start by filling the text. To do this, it's very simple. With Shift plus A, open the toolbar and search for the node called Fill Curve, and then insert it between these two nodes. Before we transform this text into 3D, we need to fix the way it's mapped. In wireframe mode, you can see that it's all messy. To fix it, we need the node called Resample Curve, and we insert it here. To make it work, click here and select the Evaluated option, while on the Fill Curve node, you need to select the End Gone option. Now it's much better. What we did was simply remove all the unnecessary parts. Now we can transform our text into 3D. To do this, we need to add the Extrude to Mesh node. As soon as it's inserted, it immediately gives us the text in 3D. To modify the thickness, you can go to the offset and change this value. For example, I'll set it to 0.2. But we're missing a piece in this text. If we rotate it, we can see that the front part is missing. To solve this problem, we need two nodes. The first one is flip face, which we place here. It's normal for this to happen. To solve this issue, we simply need to add the second node called join geometry. Let's insert this node between extrude mesh and group output, and then connect the flip faces node to geometry. Perfect, now we have our 3D text. To further improve our text, we need two nodes. The first one is called Realize Instances, and we insert it here. The second one is called Subdivide Curve, which allows us to enhance the curved parts of our text, like in the case of the letter O. So using Shift plus A, let's add the node called Subdivide Curve and insert it between the String to Curve node and the Resample Curve node. By increasing the Cuts option, the text will be divided into more segments, resulting in a smoother appearance. You can adjust this value according to your preferences. In the case of my text, three cuts are sufficient. The last nodes we need are Merge by Distance. Let's insert it here and set it to Connected. The final node we need is called Set Material. This tool allows us to apply a material to the geometry. Now let's move on to the second part of our tutorial. Using Shift plus A, let's add a circle. With our text selected, go to Modifier Properties and add a Curve Modifier. Use the Eyedropper tool to select our circle. It's normal that it appears like this. To fix it, we simply need to click on minus X. It's normal for the text to be upside down. To fix it, go to Object Properties and rotate the text by 180 degrees. Here's how it works. If you scale the circle using the S command, you'll have more space to add more text. However, if you scale the text, it will try to take up all the available space. The same effect occurs if you shrink the circle. What we need now is to have our text covering the entire circle. 
Looking from the top view, we can see that our text is already present in this part here. So I just need to add another text to cover the empty half. Let's go back to the geometry nodes. Make sure you have your text selected. Then go back here and click on this node to add the text. Okay, you can see that it has been added. Unfortunately, at this point, the two texts intersect. To solve this issue, we simply need to select and scale the curve. With a little patience, I'll try to find the right point to have the text evenly distributed and at the same distance. There, it's perfect. A couple of information about this node. This node works like the classic tools for editing text. You can modify the formatting, position of the text, letter spacing, word spacing and more. What interests us most about this node is that you can change the font. By clicking on the folder icon here, it will open the font folder on your computer. Alternatively, you can have a dedicated font folder for Blender. In my case, I use a specific folder. Of course, when changing the font, you'll need to adjust your text accordingly. In this case, I'll enlarge the text, which looks better. To decrease the spacing between the texts, you'll need to change the word spacing settings and then scale the text. One thing I don't like and want to change is the thickness of the text. I want it to be thinner. To achieve this, I just need to change the value of the offset scale to 0.05. An essential aspect for animating this graphics, as in the intro, is using an empty object. If we try to rotate our text now, this happens, and obviously it won't work like this. So let's add an empty object. You can use any empty object, but for convenience, I prefer using this one. Now, what we need to do is connect our pieces. Let's start with the circle. Select it and go to Object Properties. Select the Child of option and use the eyedropper to click on your text to link them. Now repeat the process with the text. Select your text, add Child of, and click with the eyedropper on your empty object. In this way, any modification you make to your empty object will also affect the text. Moreover, the rotation is now properly set. The fantastic thing about this project is that you can simply copy and paste the entire piece and it will be immediately usable. So select everything and press Ctrl or Command plus C. Then immediately do Ctrl or Command plus V. It may seem like nothing has changed, but in reality, you have added a new copy. Click on your empty object and use the G key to move it in any direction. We couldn't use the duplicate command in this case because if you duplicate an object that is connected with child of and move it, it might not move correctly. That's why I prefer copying and pasting. Now we have both pieces. We just need to change the text. In my case, I'll put 20K as the text. Like the previous object, I need to duplicate the text. At the moment, there's no precise method to determine how many times you need to duplicate the text, so you'll have to do some trial and error. Maybe in this case, it's best to have 20K duplicated four times. As you can see, you'll need to adjust your text based on the length of your words. Perfect, now we just need to position our two texts. So, select your empty and move it as you prefer. I want the two pieces to fit together, but the positioning is subjective and can be done randomly. I want to try to position them in a way that looks believable and proportionate. If you want more similar content on this channel, I invite you to subscribe and leave a like. I would appreciate it a lot. I believe this is the perfect position, I like it. Actually, I want to elongate my text a bit by going to Object Properties. This part is purely aesthetic and a matter of personal preference, but I prefer it this way. I think I'll make it a bit thinner, so I'll set it to 0.03. Of course, if you make modifications like this, make sure to check that the text doesn't collide. In my case, I need to adjust it a bit.
and this is my final result. I've decided to split this tutorial into two parts. We've reached the end of this first part, and in the next video, I'll show you how to add your camera, set up the lights, create the animation, and finally export this amazing project. For those who want this project, it's already available on my Gumroad page, you can find the link in the description. The project includes everything, lights, materials, and the entire composition. As mentioned before, this project is 100% customizable. Simply open the project, change your text, and in just a few moments, you'll have your own graphics. Thank you for following my video until the end. I recommend subscribing to the channel and turning on the notification bell so you won't miss the second part of this project. See you soon.